we're recording now and I'll begin by pressing screen share and clicking this one here. So what I hope you can see there is uh, a document with a couple of questions on it and a purple screen, uh, a purple image in the middle. Someone again via chat can just confirm that you're able to see that. Um, that would that would help. Yes, there's at least one person that can see it. That's good. Great, a couple. Thank you. So hopefully you'll be able to, you can see. As I mentioned um, via the announcement, what I'd like to do is, is three things. Provide some feedback about the online exam that, uh, that you completed just recently. Then talk about end of semester exams. There, there are some changes that you'll need to um, be made aware of and I want to be uh, able to provide as much clarity about that as I can and tell you also about some um, new learning resources that will be available from Monday next week. So let me see if there's anyone else waiting. Um, doesn't look like it. Everyone's here. Okay, good. So first of all, some feedback from the online exam. I'm not going to go through all 24 questions, but what the focus here will be are the questions that prove to be more difficult. So if less than, um, you know, 75% of, of you um, answered one of the questions correctly, uh, I'm going to go through, through it now. Um, and there'll be eight questions that we go through. Um, if, uh, hopefully this will, um, provide some light and uh, help you appreciate um, why or why not you may have um, answered um, this in the right way. So the first question um, I'll, I'll highlight here is um, reads, if peak tricuspid regurgitation velocity is two, mil two meters per second and the IVC 15 millimeters and collapses fully with inspiration, the pulmonary artery systolic pressure is approximately what? Well, uh, the reason I've put that here is, is as soon as you um, ask that question, you know that you're going to need to, to use the Bernoulli equation. And by um, substituting in some of the information into the Bernoulli equation, we know that the peak TR velocity is 2, and we know that 2 squared equals 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. So we're all already we know in millimetres of mercury, that 16 um, is the, the gradient across the tricuspid valve. If the IVC is 15 millimetres, which is the normal limits, we can anticipate that the IVC, um, the IVC uh, pressure, sorry, I'm just letting someone in, the IVC pressure is between zero and five. We know that 16 plus you know, five at the most uh, uh, leads us to it to an, an answer of what's closest is 20 millimeters of mercury. So that's the way to, to approach that one using the Bernoulli equation. Um, I'm confident that uh, most of you know how to do that. If you answered it incorrectly, you're most probably kicking yourself now saying, oh, you know, why didn't I get that one wrong? Uh, why did I get that one wrong? There was another question about the Bernoulli equation and it read, the Bernoulli equation can be used to what? Estimate RV systolic pressure in the set of tricuspid regurgitation. Well, we've just spoken about that. Um, and we've just indicated um, that um, it can do that. But the question is what the Bernoulli equation cannot be used for. So as a matter of fact, it can be used for that. Can it estimate RV systolic pressure in the set of setting of the ventricular septal defect? Yes, it can. The question is asking what cannot. So there's a couple of things here that, that need to be excluded already. Calculate, can it calculate all of the above? No, it can't. So what the Bernoulli equation is not used for is the calculation of the aortic valve area. Remember the calculation of the aortic valve area is made by the continuity equation. So what this question is really focusing in on is can you um, apply, you know, um, the physics principles um, and, and remember you know what particular equation you're using 
maybe it's a little bit challenging, but, um, but I think it's important to know the difference between those two uh, between the, the two equations that you're using there. A couple of questions related to congenital heart disease. Before I go there, let me make sure that there's no one else in the waiting room. Yep, okay. Um, questions related to congenital heart disease. The first question was related to these two images here. <clears throat> the two parasternal long axis images above were acquired from a patient with a VSD. The defect is what? Shunting right to left, most likely to be a muscular VSD, most likely to be small in size, or none of the above. Well, in terms of um, answers, um, let's go from, from top to bottom. Is it shunting right to left? Well, um, it's a little bit hard to appreciate by this one here, um, but I think whenever you ask, asked is something shunting from from right to left you need to be um, thinking carefully about that because that is a more unusual scenario um, so let's put a question mark there is it a muscular vsd well this particular image is a giveaway there's no way a muscular vsd occurs that high um, uh, that close to the, the the aortic valve so it can't be is it small in size well with continuous wave doppler here we can see that it certainly looks restrictive and restrictive VSDs are small in size. With continuous wave Doppler, we assume that this image is acquired from, um, because this image is acquired from the parasternal short axis view, we know that, um, that the shunt must be occurring left to right. So there's really only one answer that that can be given here, and that's C. It's most likely to be small in size. Okay. The next question um, that proved a bit challenging was a patent ductus arteriosus um, is what? Um, the result of an abnormal fetal connection results in left to right shunt that may cause right heart dilatation is the result of normal um, adult connection or results in a left to right shunt that may cause left heart dilatation. Well, let's go from top to bottom again. Is it the result of an abnormal fetal connection? No, it's not. It's a, a normal fetal connection. Well, um, uh, prior to birth, um, a patent ductus arteriosus is essential for, for normal fetal circulation. Um, does it result in a right uh, a left to right shunt that may cause right heart dilatation? No. Uh, we know that a, a ductus is, is related to dilatation of the left heart. So um, we can exclude B. Is, the result, is it the result of a normal adult connection? Well, no, it's, it's not normal. So the only really possible answer for this one here is D. The next one, amyloidosis. amyloidosis. Amyloidosis may alter cardiac anatomy. Um, that's true. Well, that's the, the statement. And this may do what? Also, alter cardiac conduction. Um, be hard to um, assess via echo. Also, in, improve uh, LV systolic function or all of the above. Well, I'm, I'm sure that you're uh, all um, aware of the fact that amyloidosis certainly is. Um, if it's present in any degree, it's not going to improve one's systolic function. Is it hard to assess by echo? Well, I've just included some images here from the, from the lecture that um, uh, Lucas gave. And um, what we tried to um, reinforce um, as per that lecture, and I hope you can appreciate anyway, is that, well, echocardiography does a pretty good job actually of um, providing some clues as to whether there or not there's amyloidosis present. So it's not B. Can it alter cardiac conduction? Absolutely. And one of the reasons it can is, is related to the fact that it's um, the kind of abnormality that's going to lead to um, thickening of, of the, the muscle, muscle mass. And um, if it's present in, in, um, in the heart, it's, it's going to eventually lead to the dilatation of the left atrium as soon as the left atrium starts getting big um, 
things like atrial fibrillation are present. So the answer to that was A. Um, next question. Um, there's, there's someone listening um, with, uh, with their mic on and they're, they're, there's just a little bit of noise. If you can just press mute, that would be, that would be helpful. Thank you. The next question, acute pulmonary embolism, <coughs> excuse me, acute pulmonary embolism may A, reduce pulmonary pressure and res respiration rate, B, cause RV dilatation and RV dysfunction, C, often cause an embolic stroke, D, lead to all of the above. Well, um, again, going starting at the top, does it reduce pulmonary pressure and respiratory rate? Well, a pulmonary embolism, there's no way it's going to reduce the pulmonary pressure, it's only likely to increase that. And if there's an important embolism in the way, the person's going to be um, breathing much more rapidly than they would normally. So it can't be A. Could it be B? Possibly. I'll come back to that one. Could it be C? It often causes an embolic stroke. Remember, we're talking about a pulmonary embolism here. We're talking about something on the right side of the heart. Now, this is most unlikely, especially if the anatomy of the heart is normal, there are no shunts present, it's most unlikely to cause an embolic stroke. So it can't be C. So if it can't be A, if it can't be C, it can't be D either. So B, it will cause RV dilatation and RV dysfunction. The next question, significant pulmonary valve stenosis will initially cause which of the following? Well, we're t I think the most important thing to, or word to, uh, remember here or to take into consideration here is what will it initially cause. Um, significantly pul pulmonary valve stenosis most initially like um, aortic valve stenosis it's going to affect um, or increase uh, the strength with which the RV is going to have to contract and that means RV musculature is going to have to uh, be thicker and initially um, uh, like any um, like stenosis on the left side of the heart too, it's going to cause RV hypertrophy. It may lead later on to RV dilatation, but that's after hypertrophy. Will it cause, tri cause tricuspid regurgitation? Maybe, but I think the, the question here is, is really one um, asking you know, the, about the effect on the, on the, on the ventricle. Next question. Uh, this is another one that, that um, uh, proved a little bit more difficult too. And, and it reads, sarcoidosis and Fabry disease result A, from immune dysfunction, B, can alter cardiac anatomy, excuse me, C, result in granuloma formation, or all of the above. Well, really, I've, I've just taken a screenshot from the lecture here to highlight the fact that um, these two disease processes are not the same. Um, one of them, um, sarcoidosis, results in immune dysfunction, and the other, uh, Fabry disease, results in granuloma formation, but um, both of them don't, Fab sarcoidosis and Fabry disease. So it can't be A, it can't be C, it can't be D. The only really one uh, answer there that, that's correct is, is B. That's the only one really that, that makes any sense. So. Look, I've recorded this. I encourage you to, to go over these if, if I was a little bit um, quick in explaining them. If you still don't understand, please send, send me an email. Be happy to do that. Um, if it was one of the other ones that you, um, that you answered incorrectly, I just don't have the time at the moment to go over that. But if you're really sort of a little bit stumped about some of the other ones, send me an email and I'll, and I'll try and get back to you. Um, Try and get back to you with, a, with an answer about um, about uh, the, the question that, that might have proved uh, more difficult for you. So that's that's the online exam. Um, some some feedback. Um, I might move on if I can to um, to the end of semester exams. And in the first place, I want to talk to you about the written exams. Um, in short, the written exams aren't going to be written exams. So uh, in the middle of last week, we were asked to change the delivery of all written exams at the end of semester to online delivery. 
which means that your end of semester exam for uh, the practice of cardiac sonography, what would normally be a written exam, is going to be uh, uh, an electronic exam and it's going to be made available to you via views. If, and, and you already have and, and, and you've been going along fine so far um, in the course, if you're able to do online exams, um, and we've done those previously, you, you've got, you should have the technology that enables you to, to access the, the exam and do it. The exam will still occur uh, during the um, exam period, which is in June. Uh, I don't have a date yet. We haven't been assigned the date. In terms of the date, the way the exam will occur is a little bit like the online exams in that there will be a time frame in which to start the exam. The time frame will not be a, you know, a 24 hour time frame or something, it'll be much shorter than that. But there'll be a couple of hours in which you can log on. When you do log on, there'll be a couple of questions that are asked of you to ensure equity. That is to say, you'll just be, um, it, what will be indicated to you is, is there, uh, there's some technology um, being used, including the fact that keystrokes and other things like that and, and your searches that you're using um, on the computer are being tracked just to make sure that you're approaching the exam in, in the right way. The, the way um, the examination will be conducted is a little bit like a, the written exams normally would be in that material that you can take into the exam is limited. So you can take some working out paper, you know, pen and pencil and eraser but it's not an open book exam. It's an individual exam and meant to test your, your knowledge um, on, you know, on the subject matter. Um, let me just share my screen with you again, if I can, because I, I, I just want to go to the, the learning guide for, um, for practice of cardiac sonography three. I think that's it. Please let me know via chat if you can't see this. Um, I hope everyone can see that. Um, so as you know, um, the practice of cardiac sonography three, um, there's an imaging evaluation, a written exam, practical exam in the logbook. I'm talking about the written exam at the moment it will still be around week 16. I'm not exactly sure of the date, it's yet to be confirmed. Um, but in, in due time, you'll be told about the date. The written exam in terms of its structure will be um, um, composed of three parts, multiple choice questions, short answer questions and long answer questions. And um, the, the material that will, will be, was going to be tested will still be tested. But the marking criteria, uh, and the marking criteria still holds, but obviously the, the, the mode, the, the method um, by which it's going to be tested is going to be a little bit different. Um, with that in mind, you've, you're, you're used to some of the exams, the written exams providing uh, diagrams and things like that. Obviously, because it's an online exam, there um, aren't going to be any diagrams that you can write. What there will be oftentimes in their place is an image. And there may be a, what's called a hot spot question whereby on that image, you'll be asked to use your, your mouse and highlight you know, particular features on that image that you think um, relate to the question that's being asked. Or you might be asked to view an image and then provide some details about what that image shows and things like that. So the structure will be a little bit different. Obviously the MCQs will be, will be the same as they normally are. They'll be single best answer MCQs. Short answer questions, will, will, um, some of them will, be, will require some text. Um, and that'll be you know, a few lines on a particular question. The long answer questions as they always are, Will be a little bit more demanding and and there'll be a, um, some some more um, depth uh, required from you 
in terms of um, in terms of those exams. So that's the that's the written exam for practice of Cardiac Sonography Three. Um, by this Friday, I have to have uh, have that com completed in terms of all the new material and things like that. It won't have been built yet. Um, I'll be part of that build process uh, in, in weeks after that. But um, until this Friday, uh, I'm going to be working on that together with the year one exams, uh, making sure that all the content that, that we are uh, need to change is going to be changed and that all you know questions that are appropriate are going to be able to be asked and things like that marking criteria are available so until this friday um, there won't be uh, a lot more thought given to the practical exams having said that there are a couple of things about the practical exams in the logbook that i can tell you the practical exams may not happen on campus and that's simply because um, the social distancing um, uh, rules that are formulated by government at you know federal and, and state level uh, are going to dictate what we're able to do. What I don't want to happen is the exams um, are moved so far into the future that they start impacting on uh, second semester material and your um, potential to graduate at the end of this year. So it may be that the practical exams are going to be the kind of uh, exam that uh, you can complete in your workplace. Now, that's not um, definite, um, but that is something we are tending to leaning, tending to lean towards. We think uh, is in the current environment, most likely to, to be the way that we're going to have to assess you. How is that going to happen? Well, there are a number of ways that you're able to send images to us um, via you know, electronic means, and we can view them you know, using different um, types of software. And there are still answers that we can, uh, or questions that we can ask you uh, electronically as well. The benefit of doing it this way is that because this semester has been so disrupted, if you were to do it that way, you'd be in an environment that you're familiar with, uh, using a machine that you're familiar with. It would still be time limited and there would be some constraints. The other thing it would mean is that um, there's going to obviously have to be some cooperation from your clinical training site. I hope that they're all appreciative but these are some of the things obviously that we have to take into account. That's about all that I can tell you about it at the moment. Um, I can't tell you a lot more. I certainly can't tell you the date. What I, I can say about a date is it will not occur before the written exam and it will most likely occur in July. Um, the reason for that um, is twofold. One, um, uh, because this semester has been so disrupted and secondly because um, starting next week there'll be some new learning material that will be available to you. Over the last couple of weeks um, Kenny and I have spent considerable time with other people at the university recording uh, the demonstration of, of some images that we are going to make available to you and ask you to rehearse at your, at your uh, clinical site. Um, and we hope that these videos um, will provide some kind of solution um, to the fact that um, we're not going to be able to meet face to face um, as we normally would like to. I would much prefer to see you guys <laughs> and be able to do things in a different way, but, but we're just not going to be able to. What I might do very briefly is um, share my screen again. Now, you won't be able to hear the audio for this, but I hope you'll get the gist um, just um, uh, as I share this with you of what um, is going to be available to you. So if I just start this, um, 
you probably can't hear the audio, but there's some nice music playing and there I am talking to, um, to the screen. These videos um, are all of varying lengths. Some of them are about 10 minutes long. Um, this one obviously is um, uh, related to the, the focus, uh, the RV um, focused apical four chamber view. The audio um, informs uh, the viewer and listener about what's being done. Um, and then uh, the small screen that you can see here um, switches sort of between the probe, uh, the platform, um, and a wider shot of the patient and the, the sonographer. Um, so that's kind of what some of that material is going to look like and it'll be available to you next week and hopefully that will be something that will benefit you. Um, as I said, this has taken some time and we do plan to make some more videos um, that I hope will stand you in good stead in semester four. Hopefully they'll only be supplementary and, and we'll still be able to do some things. You'll be able to come on campus in semester four, but uh, that's, that's the new learning uh, resources that are going to be available to you um, from, from next week. So uh, please watch out for those. Um, I feel as I've, I've said a lot. Um, what I might do is just um, encourage you if there are any questions um, particularly related to the end of semester exams, if uh, you can type away using chat I'll answer those questions now. If they're a little bit longer and you want to um, enable your video and your um, microphone, you can, you can ask away that way. Um, um, hopefully that's, that's reasonably clear then. Um, I, I can't see uh, any, any questions yet. <clears throat> um, when there are some more details available about the written exam in terms of the date um, and its exact format, um, that will be made available to you as, as soon as I can. The practical exam, the, what I've told you about it, um, next week uh, there will be a meeting um, that, at which um, you know, a definitive decision will be made um, about that. Um, so I can provide you with some more from, from next week, some more details about the practical exam. I hope I've been reasonably clear. I can't tell you everything. Obviously, we've been waiting to see whether restrictions in terms of access to the campus and things have been lifted. Um, it doesn't look like they're going to be lifted anytime soon. Students aren't allowed on, on campus and, and staff aren't meant to go on campus too unless they're given um, uh, permission uh, and there's a there's a reasonable uh, excuse for being so so we were excused for going on campus and filming those those videos that I just showed you um, <clears throat> uh, so there's a question here how will you assess us when scanning a patient from our workplace good question I don't know <laughs> they'll if that kind of thing happens it will be um, made very clear to you what kind of images and measurements will be made or will be required, sorry. What I want you to see prior to that are the demonstration videos first. And those demonstration videos should inform you about the kind of things that are going to be part of the practical exam. So I think it's best first to, to look at those videos and um, start um, to whatever degree you can uh, rehearsing those. So in the first place, you'll just be watching them. Then hopefully you might be able to chat with your supervisor. Um, at some point, I will contact you all again and ask you whether or not um, you've been able to put that into practice um, to any uh, degree. As soon as I start getting an indication from people that um, 
um, they have been able to um, uh, at least uh, rehearse some of that, that they're getting familiar with some of the material that's needed. And, and I'll provide some supplementary material as well. Um, I'll be able to start um, making some more definitive decisions about the practical exam. But um, it's still not possible at the moment. I, I don't want to be starting making plans before you guys actually um, have the opportunity to appreciate what material is going to be in the exam. So I hope that's something of an answer to, to that question. Um, <clears throat> another one, how much time will be given for the online written practical exam? Thank you, good question. The online written exam will be of a, a similar duration to what it was going to be anyway, and it was going to be an hour in duration. There will be some testing done to the exam to work out whether or not um, uh, that needs to be changed in any way. What I can assure you is that it will not be reduced in any way, okay? It won't be reduced. So uh, the exam would normally, if you were writing the exam, be an hour in duration. It will be a minimum hour of, in duration. As I said, there will be a time frame in which you are uh, required to complete the exam. So that's, um, that's another thing to keep in, 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 in mind as well. Um, so I've just spoken at length about the practical exam um, and I, I can't give you a lot more at this stage. Um, the, the, the question is about, is it about a, a pathology? Well, um, if you had have come on campus, um, the practical exam at this stage would have been mainly focused on the acquisition of images and the execution of measurements. And that will still be the case, okay? So it will be mainly testing your ability to acquire um, uh, images, um, uh, appropriate images, and to make appropriate measurements. There will be some time constraint. I just can't tell you any more about that because our focus over the last couple of weeks has been recording videos and making them available to you and modifying the written exams, which has taken some time. We just haven't had time to dedicate to the practical exam yet. So I hope that, hope that kind of answers that. Um, um, another question. Uh, what if the exam closes due to technical issues, internet dropout? Good question. So um, if during the middle of the exam, your internet server was to um, encounter an issue and something happened, um, I'm told that there is invigilation software that will um, mark that time immediately. I don't know how it happens in terms of the technical aspects, but you will be able to log back in um, and continue the exam as though that time were not lost. I, I don't know any more about that at the moment in terms of um, how that is done, but I am told that that is one of the type of things that is taken into consideration. There's another question. Um, um, I haven't given you any answers about the logbook yet, and maybe this question is related to the logbook. The logbook will not be due until after the practical exam, and it looks as though the practical exams will happen in July. The reason for that is I just want to give you all the, the time I can without running into semester two to, to you know, rehearse um, material that is going to be made available to you next week. So um, in terms of the, the practical exams, it would mean that um, uh, I don't know the specifics. I'm sorry, <laughs> asking me a lot of things about the practical exam. There'd be a patient involved who's someone not related to yourself. There'll be a time limit 
um, in which to do the exam. There'll be specific images and measurements to be made. Um, there may be an element, um, there may be some questions that you need to answer uh, on views as well. Um, that's really all I can tell you about the practical exam at the moment. Um, so will you be given practical questions before online written exams? The practical exam won't happen before the written exam. I think that in terms of um, uh, me being reasonable or us as a university being reasonable to you when, when things have been so disrupted uh, would be unfair. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, um, uh, thank you, a couple of thank yous, um, no worries. Uh, look, I, uh, guys, I know this is hard. Um, I, I'm not finding it straightforward myself. Um, in terms of the, the um, <clears throat> in terms of the videos, uh, these aren't the last videos that you'll see. You'll see videos next semester as well. And I hope that they're going to be a permanent part. Well, they are going to be a permanent part of the course from now on. Um, what they'll mean is that in the future when students come on campus, and you will be next semester, I hope, um, is that there'll be video material provided to you before you come on campus, which, pardon me, serves as a bit of a primer um, so that you know what's going to be expected of you before you come. Mm. Pardon me. Um, can the final exam be replaced with one or two case studies where the scanner, patient and send images, CD, written summary? I don't think that's going to be an option. Um, the practical exams are um, different to... <clears throat> some of the other assessment items that you will, you have done and will do second semester. In second semester, uh, you will be required to submit three case studies. So that will be an opportunity for you to do case studies, full case studies and get feedback. So there will be that kind of exam, uh, that kind of, excuse me, assessment item in semester four. But that won't be the way that things, as I see them at the moment, having thought about things, uh, having given some preliminary thought, that's not the way that the practical exam is going to be conducted. The practical exam is to make sure that the tasks that we think are related to the material that you're presented this semester, that you're able to do them in a practical setting. So I hope hope that's clear. Um, thank you for asking these questions. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to happy to answer them. Some of them I, I yeah. um, can the final exam be replaced by two? No, the final exam can't be replaced by case study. The final exam is uh, it has has to have specific content. The written exam um, is meant to be related to, to lectures and there are learning outcomes that are very specific for each unit. So um, if you look at your learning guide, you'll be able to see the learning outcomes and all the assessment items are meant to address those learning outcomes. The, the structure of the course is dependent on us trying to, to make sure that the learning outcomes for each unit are related to the course learning outcomes, which is what we, which are, are sort of specific skills and, and sets of knowledge that we um, have developed, that we um, regard are related to, you know, a, a good sonographer and the type of skills a sonographer can have. So the written exam needs to test specific things, case studies, um, uh, don't allow us that kind of scope. So the written exam has to be uh, reasonably broad, um, which is why it won't be replaced by a case study. Um, so I hope that's clear um, as to why 
Um, I understand that some of you might like case studies a little bit more, um, but yeah, that's that's it's not going. The written exam is not going to be a case study. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah. Again, thank you, thank you for the for the questions. I, I appreciate it. Um, I hope with um, going through some of the the exam, the online exam um, questions that were a little bit more difficult, and these Q and A that you're a little bit more uh, up to speed with what we're doing. There'll be at least one more Zoom session. I think we'll probably have to have two. There'll be one more. Um, uh, Zoom session as soon as I know a little bit more about the practical exam um, and then probably another one um, related to the written exam too so this is not the last time we'll get to we'll get to um, have this sort of Q&A if there are any really good questions that are sent to me via email and I think is worth sharing with everyone I'll try to do so um, if you haven't asked a question um, and there is one burning and that you'd prefer to make anonymous, please send me an email. I'm really happy to do so. Um, thanks for, for, um, for tuning in. Um, uh, this is being recorded, so I'll, I'll put it on the, on the view site tomorrow. Um, uh, watch for um, announcements. Remember the two assessments that you've got to submit next week. As well as that, keep an eye out for the new learning material. Um, I hope you appreciate that there's still things happening. <laughs> At times it, um, it feels uh, uh, a little bit distant um, having not been able to see you all. Um, we're really trying to, trying to um, keep up and, and look ahead and, and develop stuff that's, that's gonna prove helpful to you. Um, so yeah, I, I hope it does so. Um, no more questions yet. Um, oh, okay, yes, there is. Any more PNCS lectures? Um, sorry, I haven't developed any more PNCS to, uh, lectures. Most of uh, the mental energy has gone into developing the practical um, demonstration videos. What will also be available to you soon, uh, not next week, are some case studies. Okay, so I'll go through some cases uh, and try and uh, go through them in a sort of a the kind of way that we did when you're on campus, you know, present a bit of a scenario, provide some of the images and indicate how, you know, by way of images and measurements, uh, a solution to the clinical question um, was, um, was, you know, made <laughs> the, the sort of the a diagnosis was 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 made uh, uh, an answer was arrived at so so yeah they will be but 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 no more lectures um, at this stage I, I'm sorry um, um, may, maybe that means they're helpful I hope so um, <laughs> never quite tell uh, um, okay so um, it looks as though the, the chat, um, there aren't any more questions. Um, so I might sign out uh, shortly. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging in there. Um, I understand that things are, uh, uh, have been difficult. Um, I think that's the case for everyone. The, all the um, recommendations I gave last time, in, in, including you know, uh, don't forget your family, obviously, make them your priority. Um, uh, try and watch some good news as well as all the, the more distressing stuff um, um, holds. Um, um, a number of you have contacted me and, and uh, yep, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be contacted. Um, so, um, Keep watching the, the view site, um, watch out for the announcements, remember the, the assessment items that, um, that you need to submit. Um, there have been some answers and, and hopefully I'll, I've clarified a few things about that. Um, 
Um, oh, hey, why didn't, there's another question. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Uh, so will will there be a, a mock exam? Um, no, there won't be. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what the practical exam looks like yet. If you're talking about the practical exam, um, because it'll be a first time online practical exam. In terms of the written exam, will there be some um, questions beforehand? Yeah, I'll, I can provide some some exemplar questions for each of the sections. Um, I would do or excuse me, we'll do ordinarily and we'll do so again. So uh, I hope that um, yeah, prior to that, you'll be given a clear idea about what will be expected, um, both prior to the exam and within. One of the things that we're going to have to build into the exam is at the beginning of each, set, at the beginning of each section is a, as a small exemplar so that you understand kind of the way that we expect you to, to answer questions obviously multiple choice questions are pretty straightforward but in terms of the the short answer questions and the longer answer questions there'll be some more material even within the exam that hopefully will help you um, and then prior to that um, yep there'll be some some older questions and and, uh, and answers uh, that I hope will help okay good no no problem thank you um, um, okay, so um, a question about the a, a question about the research assignment. Um, so the research assignment there are two parts, and um, as you may have seen, uh, there are two folders uh, in which to upload the parts. So um, for part one, um, there'll be uh, Excel spreadsheets. What I ask you to do with that is uh, within a spreadsheet, you can make multiple workbooks. So you can have a workbook within the same overall document for the female patients and a workbook for the, the male patients, and they can go together. They'll be separate sheets. Um, but all part of the same spreadsheet. So that's part one, submit part one, okay? Then part two, which um, requires you to upload a Word document, make your cover sheet part of that work, Word document. So that's a way of submitting part one and part two separately, and also submitting the cover sheet at the same time. Um, I hope that, hope that answers that question. The cover sheet is is just um, mainly, you know, just to make sure that um, there's a question there that um, recommends that you ensure that you've got a copy that you just you don't you don't know, don't send anything without sending a final or without saving a final version of of what you submit, um, just in case things go missing or something like that. Hopefully they won't. Um, Well, look, I'm sure you're all um, probably um, wanting to have your dinner. Uh, I am. Um, so I might leave you guys now. Um, um, yep, yeah, stay safe, everyone. Um, really good to, um, to see familiar names and um, to, to be able to have, you know, a little bit of Q&A. Um, I think, as you can tell uh, from some of, the, some of the news, things are, I think, um, looking positive. Um, uh, one word from the Vice Chancellor is that, yeah, th they made the decision that online exams are going to be necessary. So um, certainly before semester two, it doesn't look as though, you know, there's going to be any um, access to the, to the university. But from semester two, if things continue to track the way they are, yeah, in all likelihood, will actually be able to do something a little bit more normal <laughs> next semester. So um, that's, that's uh, exciting and, and hopefully good news. Okay. Thanks everyone. Um, yeah, stay safe. 
um, and uh, look forward to yeah to getting some of your assessment items and and uh, and presenting some more material to you soon. Um, I'll, I'll finish up there. All the very best.